back to the Gila Knot Kayaks Workshop. I'm Nick Shada, and we're building the Petrol Play SGC Kayak with a kit from Chesapeake Lightcraft. It's my design, and they make the kit for this, and they've supplied me the kit. So my friend Bill and I are working together to make this kit so you can see how it all goes together. Bill has never built a boat before, and so he's here as a stand-in for you guys. Hopefully he asks the questions you might ask, and in that way, you get those answers to those questions while we're building the boat. So as I said in the last episode, this whole process of putting the hull together was dragging out into a fairly long single episode, so I decided to break it down into multiple smaller chunks, make it a little bit more digestible, and make it so you're not sitting in front of the computer for an hour and a half at a stretch. You're still free to do that. I'll be releasing these four episodes and on consecutive days so you can watch them all at once if you want or you can watch them one day at a time just trying to make it a little bit easier to get through. in the last episode we assembled the hull side panels started getting those put together did a little bit of stitching on the bottom what i want to do in this episode is start to make the hull take shape so we'll start by laying down the bottom panel stitch together the side panels to each other, lay them in the forms, and get the steelers put in place. We'll do a little bit more stitching in here, um, but really this is just sort of getting the shape established. And then in the next episode, we'll do the major stitching, and an episode following that, we will spot weld everything together. So without further ado, let's get straight to assembling the hull. So, now we have our full length panels. Essentially, we're ready to start the process of assembling those into the hull. And we're gonna get into what we call the stitching part of the stitching okay. loop. Um, so, in the unboxing, we found this bag of wire and some other stuff. We're gonna, this copper wire is what we're gonna use to stitch the um, panels together. So I have a set of wire cutters here. Um, and we're going to take this circle and cut it into thirds, so every 120 degrees or so, um, if your mind works that way. We can just take a chunk in the wire cutters and cut straight across. Um, if you've got good wire cutters, taking one big chunk like that can work. If you not as strong or your water cutters aren't quite as good, divide it up into smaller pieces um, and then cut that. And it's hard for you, instead of using all your grip strength on this, I'm sticking it down on the workbench here and pressing down with my arm to make that cut. So there's one set of wires, cutting this all into thirds and and divide it into smaller chunks so it's easier to cut. And I'm holding on to the ends of these because the wire cutters can sort of shoot the pieces out the end. Um, and so now we have a bunch of wires and we'll just collect those into a cup so they're easily accessible. And so now we'll show the process of the initial stitching. So I'm going to just get the uh, bottom panels alone here and we'll move these other panels to the side, just get them out of the way while we're doing this thing. And in order to move these, it can help. Right now that super glue is there, it's holding the panels together, but it's a little bit weak. And if you lift it up like this, it can put a lot of strain on that. Where if you turn it up on edge, it takes all the strain off that joint and we can then lift it up safely and move it around. So we have the bottom panels here. If we look back at our drawing of the panels, it shows the long straight edge in between the matching mirror matched panels. So that's going to be the keel line, that long straight edge. So that's this edge here. We've got the bevel side, that's this side that we did the gluing on, is in between 
the two panels. We want to line up these panels next to each other and you'll see a row of holes along this edge. Mm -hmm. There's a row, row of holes on both edges. We're going to take our copper stitches here, go through hole on one side and then hole on the other side and we'll take this piece of wire and we'll just cross it sort of 90 degrees, but like with a pencil width in there and give it a couple twists. We're not making that tight, but we're making sure it doesn't come untwisted. Right. So you're not binding the wood. Right. So again, run it straight through, take the two legs across, and then one okay. twist two twists. That should be enough. Just two twists. All right. Yeah. And once the you got a few stitches on it, you probably can run the wire straight on through. Yeah, I found this one went right through. Yeah. Just two twists. It goes right through now. Okay. Get about 50-50. And then use a pencil end. I'm going around when yeah. you twisted them. Right. Yeah. yeah. This, let's zoom in on that a little bit here. So you see this wire is wrapped around this wire. So this wire is sticking straight out, and then this one's wrapped around it. That allows this to move like that, you see? Or if you look at these, they're twisted around each other. So you have to hold them and twist. Yeah, so if we come back down here to the next stitch hole. So there's a stitch hole, and some of these are pretty close together, but we're going to take and cross them at kind of 90 degrees and then twist them like that. So that's opposed to taking and leaving sort of one out and then wrapping it around like that. That doesn't secure it in the same way it is when they're sort of twisted around each other. So, like that. There we go. I guess we'll work our way down that line. Right. We're going to run stitches all the way along this edge, all the way to the tip. We don't want to come down this other side. It makes a very skinny boat. We just want it on one, one edge, that long straight edge, all the way to the tip. So the spacing is every six inches here. Um, you know, the, there's not a master logic to that. Just it's close enough together that um, the panels get held securely together, but not so close that we're not spending all day wiring. So you could do this with pliers too, if it, yeah. if it hurt your fingers yeah. a lot. Yeah. Because I do notice that you have to have a little finger strength to do this. Yeah. So how'd that stitching go? Ah, one. Fairly quickly, it didn't take long at all. Yeah, yeah, doesn't. It's not too much to it. And again, the CNC machine at Chesapeake Lightcraft drill pre-drills all these holes. It pre-does the bevel, and I, I haven't actually talked about what the bevel does for us. Having the them CNC mill that bevel on there saves a lot of time. And what we're trying to do is, if you imagine two pieces of wood coming together and it's, this is the bottom of the boat. And you look at that, that's a nice tight seam there. 
from the inside, where if you look at this on the outside, there's a bit of a gap. By beveling these, we move that tight seam to the outside of the boat. There you go. Yeah. And it will end up with a little bit of a gap on the inside, but we're going to be gluing that and filling that in with epoxy. When I was first teaching classes, I can bevel the whole boat. This is at a 45 degree angle in about 15 minutes. Really? In the class, it was about a four hour operation just because people weren't used to doing it. By having the CNC machine cut it, I, I think the guys at the shop at CLC don't like me very much because it's a, not the easiest thing to mill on the CNC machine. It's sort of touchy, but it saves a huge amount of time for the, whoever's building the boat. Right, right. The next thing we want to do is we're going to start opening up this, this shape. We have these bottom panels stitched, stitched together along the keel line, but we need to make that the shape we want. And you will find a couple places along the hull that have double stitch holes on this edge opposite the one we just stitched up. And then we had separated out our external forms here. And remember, in the unboxing, I said the ones with the sticky outy nubbins here, those are hull forms. I don't know how well those show up. There you can see them in the... So those sticky outy nubbins, those are hull forms. And this one has two, so this is form number two. We also have form number three here. So three nubbins. We're going to use forms two and three um, on our initial opening up of the hull here. And form two starts, the, the numbering goes from the bow towards the stern, stern, so form one would be closer to the bow, form two, form three, and form four. This is going to go right in here. There's this double stitch hole right here, and we're going to run wires through that stitch hole and stitch it to the form. So the idea here with the pencil gap is so that these forms won't be so bound together that they'll... Correct. Yeah, if, if we tighten them up really tight and we go to open them, you're, you're going to think, oh, I'm going to break something as it is. Oh, okay. Um, but you, you won't break something. It will be possible to do. But if we had them too tight, then it wouldn't be possible to do. Okay. So what we're going to try to do here is... These double stitch holes go one on one of each of those holes in the double hole goes on either side of the form. So we want to have essentially a U-shaped piece of wire here, so bent in half, and we're going to take from the inside of the boat between the two panels, drop that down one leg through each of those two holes. And one thing I found boat building is there's always something falling over. And you can put it back upright every time it falls over or just let it lie there so it doesn't fall over again. So I've got that down through that hole and we're just going to now take and stick one leg through. There's a hole in the form here mm -hmm. just below that shine. And now we're going to take I stuck one leg through it, and we're going to twist these together just like we did on... No, we're not going to do that yet. Oh. You don't get overexcited <laughs> here. All right, so here's the double stitch holes. Here's the form, and you see there's a hole right here down near the chine of the form. This form's going to go through here. This is form number three. And we're going to take this piece of wire bend it in half. Just make a little sort of staple shape. And now these two stitch holes in here, one on either side. So pulled down through like that. Now one leg on either side of this form, and I'm going to stick my wire through that hole and get a little twist on this. Grab 
like that. Make sure this is lined up where it's supposed to be. <clears throat> and twist that together. Now's the fun part. Get this upright and we will open the book. And it's going to groan and complain and make ugly noises. Okay. And the, the forms will fall over. But just sort of don't rush it, but ease it down towards that form. And don't use the form as a lever. Right. It's not that strong. Okay. We're just gonna <laughs> we're just gonna ease it down here. Okay. And so I'm gonna here I'll put my hand under the boat. So I'm pushing down on the keel line, not on the form. And I'll take and spread this out towards the ends. So once again, we will make one of those U-shaped sort of staples. Go from the inside through the double stitch holes and down and through that wire hole. And you grab the pliers, a pair of pliers over there. So when you want to tighten something with these, with this copper wire, you, you think what you want to do is twist really tight, right? Um, but that's just going to break the wire. What we want to do is pull the wire tight, pulling it tight, oh, yeah, getting yeah. it down, and then locking it in place by twisting it. And see, right. I just broke that wire. Yeah. Um, so you so, want to remove the space. Yeah, right. So you're not trying to draw it together by putting a lot of tension on, that, on the twist. We're trying to pull it together by just pulling the wire taut. So again, bring it down. And you're putting one side of the wire on either side of the form? Yeah. Yeah, so the wires are around either side of the form. And I'm going to pull this tight, get the, the form down, the bottom tight against the form, and then just give it a little twist mm -hmm. um, to hold it. It doesn't take a lot of twisting. The more you twist it, the more likely you are to break it. Okay. Okay, so we're going to poke this through the holes here. Like that. Like that. And then get it down tight on the wood. And then, well, this one's longer. I'll go this way. There it goes. In nice. Get the form down. And so what we want to do is get all the slack out of there. Oh yeah, you can see the slack behind the form that yeah. needs to be pulled out. Otherwise, like you say, you're not, you're just going to break the wire. And so do we still want to leave that pencil gap? No, we want this pretty tight. Okay. But again, we're locking it in. We're not drawing it in. Right. Yeah, that looks good. Good. So these forms can be a little bit unstable here. So if we just put a clamp on them, that can help stabilize them a bit. Mm -hmm. Right. Going the, sticking out the other direction so it stabilizes it. Okay. The other direction. Gotcha. Can you see the shape of the boat starting to it, take? Yeah, it's starting to come into shape here. Yeah. Yep. So 
the next thing we want is the long side panels. I'm just going to slide this slightly to one side here. So the, yeah, the longest ones there. So at each end of these side panels, there's a number of stitch holes. One, two, three. We're going to stitch those together at both ends. And so here we'll do the same thing we did along the keel line and just get that 90 degree and give it a nice twist. So we're, we're not drawing this up super tight. And once you got one through, it should be easier to get the other through. So again, 90 degrees, get a little pinch and twist so we get them wrapped around each other. All right. So now we'll do the same thing at the other end. Okay. All right. So uh, does it matter if you start in the middle or? It does the, not matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Hi, Eli. Hello. Hello. So now we've got the side panel stitched up at both ends. Um, why don't you head down to that end and we'll just lift this up, bring it over the boat, and then open it up. There it is. All right, we're done. <laughs> so these side panels should have some double stitch holes in them corresponding to the forms. So again, we'll take, make that little staple. We'll run them through either side from the inside going out, roll them in tight, and then go through the top of the form here. Bring it in tight to the form, get it in all the way. Pull that through, bring it up pretty snug with the form, and give it a little twist to lock it in place. So we do that to the top of all four forms. Okay. So who came up with this idea of stitching glue? I don't know. It, it's been around for quite a while. Um, you know, I think back in the 50s, you know, people started doing it. Okay. Um, you know, when plywood became a thing, oh. um, it was fairly early on, which, you know, sort of implies that before plywood was a thing, it was probably something similar that people were doing. So if you have trouble getting the wire through the holes, I use this little tiny little drill here just to, um, and actually the, the drill bit I have on there, I think isn't even a drill bit, it's like a pin that I sharpened. Um, but this little thing can spin around and run through that hole. We're going to want this down next to the, the panel, not above it. Okay. All right, I think that does it. All right, nice. All right, so we've got these two forms, form two and three, in place. And as we're doing that, make sure that um, basically these panels can get next to each other so that long edge. We don't want things so tight that we can't get them lined up again. Um, now we've got a couple more forms here. We've got form one with one nubbin and form four with four nubbins. And we've got a couple more places with the double stitch holes. So right in here, mm. there's a double stitch hole. You see it right, right there, double stitch hole. So we're going to take and put these forms in the remaining double stitch holes just at the top. Just at the top. Just at the top. And again, we're coming from the inside going out. Double stitch holes right here. So once again, nice U-shaped bit. And from the inside going out, pull that through there tight. And we want the wires on either side of the form 
send it through the hole. Yeah. And then we want to pull this tight so the, the forms up tight against the side panel. And then just lock that in place. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side. So nice and tight against the boat, right? Yep. Okay. Now we'll do the same thing form one. Find the double stitch holes. All right, they're right up here. So there and there. So there appears to be a little resin stuck in the hole. So the wire won't go through. I generally find this easier from the inside going out because <laughs> the gum is on the outside. It's not going to, we're not going to close this gap. Okay. Because there's another piece that goes in there. So all I got to worry about is getting yeah, it Get attached. it tight at the top. Yep. And that's all that matters. Okay. Nice. And do the same on the other side. <clears throat> so I'm finding that it's easier to pull the boat to the uh, form than try to pull the wire through yeah. and pull the boat with the wire because I think that would just yeah. cause problems. Yeah, the wire is not super strong. The more you can do with your hands as far as moving things towards each other, the the better off you'll be. Yeah. All right, I think that's it. So we almost have a bolt-like object here. We have one mo more set of panels to put in here. Just peeling some tape off. We've got those steelers, or these little mid strips here. These will end up going in there, but like the side panels, we just want to stitch together the ends. Okay, so that's the process with the entire bottom of the hull is do the ends first. I guess one thing you have to be careful of here is just not getting these too tight. So that yeah, they, so that there's not much risk of that on these end stitches. No. You, you know, because it's only opening up a little bit. Okay. Um, where not like the bottom where it was opening wide. Okay. Um, so don't need to worry about it too much. So now we will take, drop this piece inside as well. So mm -hmm. run that all the way. Let's see which way you see your angle going. Okay, so that matches the stem. So that goes all the way up in there and open it up a little bit so we can get things somewhat aligned. Now we've got all the panels generally situated. What we want to start doing now is the full-on stitching. All right, so we've got the hull sort of taking shape here. It's in the forms. We've got a few stitches in starting to take shape. It kind of looks like a boat. But I don't want to jump straight into the full-on stitching in this episode because it'll drag on a bit. So I'm going to take a break right now and end this episode. And in the next episode, we'll do that stitching. In the episode following that, we will do the spot welding. I'll be releasing the next episode hopefully tomorrow. And that way, you don't have to wait to see how the process goes on. So if you're interested in all of this, um, turn on notifications so you know when the next video comes out. Hit subscribe so you're on the list to receive these videos and uh, hit like if you're liking this. The thing that really supports us the most, Chesapeake Lightcraft and I, is buying a kit to build your own, getting a set of plans. You can get them from me or from Chesapeake Lightcraft. If you're interested in building any boat, they have all sorts of boat building materials and supplies, tools, whatever you might need. Or you can buy a set of plans directly from me for this boat or any of my other strip-built boats, which again, Chesapeake Lightcraft sells kits 
for all my designs, and you can get those directly through Chesapeake Lightcraft. <laughs>